Hello all, this is Kade and welcome to the next Starfield ship building video. Because this one is going to be released on a Monday and I'm not a fan of Mondays, I thought it would be an excellent day to show you a little bit of a pirating ship because what better day than to become a pirate than a Monday because Mondays are just crappy. So I hope that with this video it may be a little bit better to you and you can have some nice inspiration to build yourself a lovely Class A starship or potentially you choose to upgrade it to a Class B. The choice, as they say, is entirely yours. So what do we have then in our Class A build? Well, we are running a three-deck ship with, of course, a bottom deck and deck one, where we enter and have, of course, our utility. We have a deck two where all of the activities take place. And then we have the most important deck three, where, of course, we find the bridge in our captain's quarters. So let's take a look through what we have then. Let's start out with the habitation modules. So let me just select the ones here that are entirely optional. So we have a 2x1, another 2x1, another 2x1, and a 1x1 down on deck one. The ones you want to choose here are entirely up to your choice. You just need to use the sizes that are being listed here. Then for deck two, we have a 3x1 flanked by a pair of 2x1s. Then they go into a pair of 3x1s, which are being flanked by a pair of 2x1s. Again, these are entirely your choice. You can use whichever ones you like, and you could even replace the 3x1s with 2x1s if you so desire. And then finally, we have the captain's quarters all the way on deck 3. And this one again is entirely your choice and preference. Use whichever ones you want. Now, as for the ones that you have no choice with, well, that comes down to these ones here in the center on deck two. These have to be the TIO top modules without the side door accesses. So we have a pair of companion ways and then finally a 2x1 here. So these are not a option of choice here. You have to use these particular modules. You also cannot replace these two with spines because the one up front here uses our ladder from deck one up all the way to the bridge. And the one behind here, we're using a docking collar on top of it. So you want to use uh, these kind of modules so that you have all of the accesses that the game requires you to have. So besides then our habitation modules, what did I go with for the other useful bits? For our reactor, we go on with a A-grade reactor as promised a full A-grade build. So this is, of course, the top tier of the A-grade reactors, but use whichever one you want. And like I said, maybe you don't have a very high Starship design skill, but you have piloting and a B-grade reactor allows you to get more power than an A-grade reactor. Then by all means, use a B-grade reactor. And a B-grade reactor, of course, also means you can have access to B-grade weapon systems. For our graph drive, a A-grade graph drive is going to be plenty. It gives us in this weight category 28 light years. Of course, this is skill dependent a little bit. So if you need a little bit more range, then maybe you want to go with a B-grade graph drive if you're also using a B-grade reactor. But the goal with the graph drive is ideally you want to keep it as light as possible because there's no point in adding extra weight if it doesn't give you any performance benefits. For our landing gear systems, I went with the Nova Galactic once again, but we went a little bit overkill. We have three on either side in the rear, three on either side in the front, and then one more here in the center. You can definitely get away with fewer landing gears if you want to put something else in place there. For our cargo capacity, I've gone with shielded cargo base because if we're going to be a pirating vessel, Probably the stuff we have is stolen or illegitimate goods. So we want to make sure that the authorities have as little chance in finding out. So we have a pair of 10 ST hauler shielded cargo bays. So one here and one here. And then we have another pair of the Gamma 1010 shielded cargo holds on either side over here. These will provide us with around 8000 uh, shielded cargo capacity with micro and skills. For the cosmetics. Deimos uh, wings here, so one on either side. And then in the rear, we have two of the shroud caps, a Deimos hull and a Tayo cowling. Going over to deck two, where things get, of course, a little bit more complicated. In the front, we have a shroud nose cap. And on the bottom here, 
you will find the jammer. So if you're going to be running shielded cargo bays, you definitely also want to bring yourself in a jammer. So these two combined will give you a really good chance of avoiding detection. I think it's about a 78% success chance. It's being flanked over here by a pair of the Daimon Sport Wings and we find another pair slightly further back and then a final pair over here. We also find these striped caps so over here and you can see that the Daimon's Wing has been clipped into the striped cap. You can use the technique as shown of course or on PC you can edit some files or get a mod and you can do it much easier. We have some of the Nova radiators here. They add a little bit of a visual flair to the, get the ship in style. Then we have some Daimon spines. Daimon's radiator, another Daimon spine aft here. So that's your cosmetics around here. For our fuel capacity, we're running the M50 Ulysses tanks. A pair of these will provide us with 500 fuel, which is plenty of range to get anywhere that you need to go. Now, as we need a lot of speed being a pirate, so we want to catch our ships, of course, we are running White Dwarf 3015 engines, uh, four of these in total. They provide us with the top speed as listed here of 180, of course, with skills that can go higher. And with max skills, you can go over 200. And the grass drive, of course, as we discussed, is going to be there in the back. Uh, portholes on top as well for some of the modules if you want to choose so uh, again you know when it comes to the cosmetics choice is pretty much the name of the game on the top deck we have another pair of those striped cowlings on either side and they flank our docking collar shield generator and our captain's quarters which in my case i got some portals on top and one in the rear and finally our bridge is of course from strata Ackland the uh, wider of the top bridges that they have. So all in, this brings us to a ship at a mobility rating of 70. So it is not maxed out in its mobility, that's because we do have a very decent chunk of cargo capacity. If you wanted to go higher mobility, you simply sacrifice your cargo capacity or you remove some of the uh, structural elements. By all means, you can do that, but I find that 70 mobility is more than good enough. We have plenty of jump range, a good amount of shields, so it makes for a very effective little ship. And the damage is certainly nothing to snooze at for a Class A ship. So for the cargo capacity here, as you can see, we have a total of 1680 with what I have in skill-wise, and just over a thousand of that is shielded. Now keep in mind, uh, if you want to carry sh the illegal stuff, don't try to fill your cargo base up uh, to the rim. With all of the shielded stuff, the higher the load is, the bigger the chance of it being detected. So, you know, carry a little bit of Ill illegitimate cargo at max and just add it up with some legitimate cargo. So that is the entirety then of this little A-grade build. Uh, I hope it is going to be a useful uh, layout for you. And for those who are interested, I shall now show you the interior that I run with. And then finally, I'll show you the ship over in space. So let's go into our little build. Boarding again, of course, through that tile bay. And in my case, we have, of course, the armory, as I like to have an armory next to where I'm going to be leaving the ship, so you can suit up and gear up in general. Then over here, of course, our workshop, so that provides us with research and all three of the crafting tables, so industrial weapons and, of course, spacesuit. And on the other side, we find ourselves a research uh, or laboratory, science place. So another research station and a medical station. Uh, consider we also have an infirmary in my build. You do not necessarily need it. I just like it for role playing reasons. Going then into the main deck area. Up front, a engineering bay. So this one is Stroud Eklund. Then it's being flanked by control stations from Deimos, which lead into the Deimos 3x1 uh, birds. And on this side, it is flanked by a Stroud Ackland uh, 2x1 bird as well. Then over here on the other side, it is almost identical. 
So another control station, another Deimos 3x1 bird, and on this side I have it flanked by a Stroud 2x1 infirmary. So you can see the infirmary also provides you with a research lab and a pharmaceutical lab, so exactly the same as the science laboratory does. Then to go into the rear section of the ship, over here we enter our docking area, so this is for a docking module. Then in the back here we have a computer core. And keep in mind like th these modules, so this connection way, this one and this 2x1, these have to be those diode top modules without the side access. And then the ladder over here brings us into the captain's quarters. With of course a, a lovely viewport to the rear of the ship. And we have some in the top as well. And of course as a final stop on our journey for the interior. We're going to find the bridge all the way at the top of the ship. This being the wider of the Stroud Eklund bridges means we have a lot of chairs here. Sadly they have nothing to do but just watch you do all of the work. Which seems very fitting. So let's take a seat and take off and take a look at the ship in space. Take off initiated. And watch those gears go. Into the night sky. Now let's go ahead and find ourselves a place of a little bit more light. Let's see if we can get some over here perhaps. Raffle please. And it goes straight towards us and over the top. There we go. We have a lovely little bit of the sun. So if you want to zoom out, this is the aft of the ship if you are in control of it. And of course from the interior we have this top down uh, of the bridge. So of course that does mean that the front of the ship is blocking some of your visibility. But in general you want to keep targets on top of you anyway. So that should be fine. Let's take a look through the photo mode so that we can actually circle the entirety of the ship. So here she is in all of her glory. Painted, of course, in black, greys and reds, because we are being naughty, naughty criminals here. And, you know, everybody knows that black and red means it's a criminal ship. It's just the law. There's no arguing that fact. It is just what it is. But yeah, overall, a uh, fairly sizable looking ship, considering it is still just an A-grade build. So it feels uh, almost larger, and that's why you know you can actually upgrade this one to a B-grade ship relatively easily, and you will still have uh, pretty much all of the benefits from it. You may just lose a little bit of mobility, and especially if you want to go increase your mobility, but you're going to reuse B-grade engines, you will lose a lot of your top speed. Uh, with B-grade engines, you go from the 180 base to like a 140 base, so that is a substantial loss in velocity so that is something that you have to decide on yourself if that is worthwhile or not anyhow this has been it i hope this is another ship that you can use for your own inspirations i uh, hope that the interior layout can be used for you of course just builds everything around it uh, as you desire again this layout uses a very logical system of parting it avoids uh, conflict areas so we mean that we get our stairways and our doors exactly where we want them to be. Which remains still the largest challenge, of course, for the building in Starfield. The next video that I will make is going to be a B-class ship. So that will probably be coming out around Wednesday. And with that, we have covered pretty much A, B and C-class. Of course, we went through the entirety of all of the interiors. So that covers the shipbuilding of Starfield fairly well. So I think from out here, we may have to look into doing some other things. If you have any suggestions for things you want me to look at, whether it is Starfield or some other things around science fiction ships, 
by all means let me know down below. I do love my spice ships very, very much. For now though, thank you all so much for watching again all of the comments that you're leaving behind. It is really amazing to see and well, I hope it will continue. That's really all I can say about it. For now, I've been Kale. Goodbye.